tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads from over 200 countries and your number one source in after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV, the destination for TV superfans. Producing aftershows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows. Interviewing celebrities and showrunners. And bringing you behind-the-scenes exclusives. All thanks to E! Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hello, AfterBuzz fans! We are here again doing another Spotlight On with the amazing cast from Star's new limited series, The Missing. I have next to me here, James Nesbitt. Hello there. Um, Francis O'Connor, the beautiful. And Checky Cario. Yes. There we go! <laughs> <laughs> I was so nervous I was going to get your name wrong because it's so French, well, but I love well. it. Who, I mean, Checky. It's almost like cheeky in itself. I love yeah, it. Yeah, cheeky, uh, Chucky, uh, Jackie, um, Jackie. Uh, <laughs> Jackie-o. Yeah, Jackie-o. Jackie-o, yeah, Jackie-o. I know. Yeah. Cheerio. Yeah. Cheerio. <laughs> so, um, The Missing is an amazing, amazing show. I just got to watch the pilot. Um, and it's, it's so riveting. And I feel like it's about a topic that we've seen so many times on the news. But to be able to see it played out through the parents' eyes is something that I've yet to see happen other than on the Taken. And you're, you're not Liam Neeson in this. No, no, no. We're, we're, we're from the very man. same place, actually. Yes. We're good friends. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, he's a good man. Um, so how would you guys describe it? Well, it's a story about uh, uh, a married couple, a family, uh, a happily married couple, uh, devoted to their one son, Oliver, uh, who is uh, six years old. They go on their summer holiday to France, um, the car unexpectedly breaks down, so they have to stay in a little village nearby where the car gets fixed. Uh, it's during uh, the French, uh, the World Cup in France in 2006. Um, France are playing Italy, and I think the quarter, or uh, playing Brazil in the quarter final. Uh, Emily, uh, played by Francis, my wife, goes back to the hotel, but little Oliver wants to go for a swim, so I kind of think, oh, how can I resist it? And on the first night of the holiday, when the car's broken down, we go to a local pool. We have a lovely swim, a lovely time. He says he's thirsty. We go for a drink. Everyone is celebrating the match. And just at that moment when I'm at the bar, France score. And the place goes crazy. I've been holding his hand. I'm sort of distracted. I look away. I look back. And he's gone. And literally leaving. Because it's you know what's going to happen in the previews. of like you, You've seen the previews. You know at some point this little boy is going to go. And at the very beginning, it, it almost it plays out in two different time periods. Mm-hmm. It plays out in 2006. When the when he first disappeared, yeah. and in present day, mm-hmm. um, so what was that like playing in those two different time periods? Well, it was good because they separated them in terms of shooting it. We shot mm-hmm. all of 2014 first, and then we shot 2006, um, which was great because by the time we got to the 2006 stuff, which is all the you know the the, the our son going missing, you know we had we had a great connection yeah. mm-hmm. and um, everyone was very comfortable. So, uh, and a lot of the really tricky scenes are in that. The, in 2006 so mm-hmm. we're able to kind of really connect and really go for it yeah it was great absolutely and Jackie I mean you're you were in um you had to come out of retirement to shoot 2006 scenes what was that like you, not as you, an actor I just know as, not as an yeah. actor but <laughs> you went from beekeeper almost to James Bond that opening <laughs> shot of you I yeah mean, yeah right I know I was, I was quite annoyed at that actually he gets the best <laughs> opening shot seen on tv in a long time I was like oh my gosh I had to rewind it a couple of times yeah, yeah, yeah. what yes, was yes. that like um, well, uh, you know, uh, I, I had to, uh, in 2014, I'm uh, in, retired uh, since uh, eight years, um, being a, a beekeeper. Uh, I feel at home <laughs> here. Ah, yeah, of course. You ah. know? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, yes, and uh, having a good time with my wife and uh, trying to uh, uh, be uh, good with my daughter. And um, so, you know, the body starts to get uh, a bit lazy, you know, uh, I'm limping and you, you will know why a little later. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so then when 2014 comes, you know, it's like a relief in a way, you know, because um, I feel uh, in 2016, I'm really a, um, um, uh, with a lot of empathy for the character uh, of uh, James, uh, Tony. Uh, to I, re, I, I identify with his obsession 
to uh, to um, not to give up on uh, trying to find the truth, whatever it is. So uh, it's um, it's a real uh, mission I give mm -hmm. to myself uh, against uh, the will of uh, my, my family, but they they support me and this uh, uh, passion I have for truth and uh, and. Uh, uh, justice, you know. Yeah. And do you think it's that empathy that will really draw fans into all of your characters? Well, you know, I think, you know, it's not based on anything in particular, of course. And it, it, at the core of it, a, a, a young boy goes missing, but it's about so many other characters. You know, we've talked before about the notion if you if you drop a pebble into a pond. I mean, there are many many ripples, but. I think it's something that in our subconscious we're all familiar with. It's something we've come across before. You mm -hmm. know, the, the most unimaginable horror happening to anyone. I mean, you can't really imagine anything in, uh, worse. And, and indeed, Fran and I have, have, have talked a bit about the fact that we would have thought beforehand that being parents ourselves, that would have been an enormous aid and an enormous crutch. But actually, if you really try to imagine that happening to your own kids, you can't. So, yeah, um, uh, yeah I think people will be... You know, the, the, what's also useful about the two time zones is that you're constantly jumping between, you know, 2006 at the beginning of the show, seeing this very happy family mm -hmm. just, you know, going about their kind of, you know, their, their holiday and uh, looking forward to spending time together. And then when you jump to 2014, you see not only the loss and the horror of that loss, but the havoc it has wreaked on them. You know, a marriage which is kind of um, uh, broken, uh, how they've tried to deal with the, the, the disappearance in different ways, how they're all kind of lost. And, and mm -hmm. yet, but also, as well as it being about the worst thing that can happen and the worst that people can be, it's also about the best that people can be. You know, um, Cheki, who plays Julian, the, the, the detective, um, in 2006, uh, we have a very difficult relationship. Mm -hmm. Yet in 2014, when I'm separated and I, uh, from, from Emily, somehow they find something and they need each other. So it's about people... It's about separation, but it's also about people leaning on each other. It's about the resilience of the human spirit mm -hmm. uh, as much as it is about the most awful thing that can happen. Absolutely. And, I mean, did you guys... Uh, you, you filmed all these very, very, very kind of emotional scenes. Like, hmm. I don't... I can't yeah. imagine, like, what what set was like, but how did you guys get through those? And did you, did you really work together to find that emotion or well, we were lucky we got a whole week of rehearsal okay. which is kind of rare mm -hmm. and I felt like that really helped kind of create the framework mm -hmm. for a lot of the scenes we had to do um, and then you know we just kind of I think it was one of those things we both kind of knew that we had to kind of go there and we kind of just yeah um, I, th I think what was also very interesting and yeah. helpful was that you know shooting 2014 first uh, which is actually when we kind of or like that yeah. about uh, uh, checking out like that super mm -hmm. love um, yeah. uh, it's uh, <laughs> as as Tony and Emily as you see the just horrible kind of um, devastation that the years have brought to their story um, as they are like that funny enough I think Fran and I because we had to support each other mm -hmm. to do those scenes we became much more like that so it helped that you know, we were able to kind of support each other. I mean, and that was a key and crucial part, I think, for both of us. Really. I was funny, I was remembering when we started 2006 and I kind of, I think, I kind of let everybody pick your hand up and be like, oh yeah, that's right, we can hold hands that's now. Right, we're, exactly we love, right. we, we still love each other. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also it helped enormously that because Oliver sort of features a little bit in the 2014 stuff, although it's, it's sort of in the imagination or in flashback mm -hmm. we were able to forge a relationship with him off camera so that when we got to 2006 you know it felt so natural yeah. he was a little boy that we cared about enormously you know and he's also called Oliver playing Oliver and Which it was because you could he, kind of say yeah. you could call out Oliver and yeah you know it was uh, he's yeah. He was a lovely boy, yeah, wasn't lovely. he? Yeah. He's a great little actor too. Yeah, and he's, yeah. he's never done it before. Oh, God. Never done it before. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that always. Oh that's always gosh. much better. Yeah, because I mean, it was, it's, it's so natural for him. Like yeah. that scene of you guys in the car and you two in the back seat was just. I I was just like, oh, that's mom and mom and child. Yeah, like, yeah, that yeah. made that's so much great. sense to me. Yeah. And Chucky, you usually play the villain. Yeah. And in mm. a lot of movies, like you, there's a whole reel of you on YouTube that's just all of your villainous <laughs> parts. Um, what was it like, kind of playing the good guy a little bit, the good detective, the good cop? You know, it's great because I'm a moment uh, in a moment in in my life where uh, you know, um, ten years ago uh, I turned fifty, and I looked uh, like that. I saw the road. I say, wow, there is a, quite a long road. I still feel uh, strong, you know. What is left? I start doing music. 
So doing music, you know, made me uh, approach the acting in a different way. Uh, I, I mean, uh, I, I still want uh, really deeply uh, be an actor and give a lot uh, uh, to share with the audience. But uh, you know, I, I'm mo I become more wise. Uh, I'm more. I have more patience. I'm less uh, into the competition. You know, I'm more laid back. So this was uh, sort of qualities which were interesting for a character like him. Mm. And uh, it, it, for me, it's like a signature um, in a way of w where I am today. You know, I can be a, a, a father. I'm a grandfather also in real life. I have mm -hmm. a nine years old uh, grandson and a, a daughter two years old. So it was great, you know, meet, meet, um, meet meet them you know they are so for me also play in another language you know meet hmm. people from a different uh, uh, culture and mm -hmm. you know and yet we are the same you know deeply but you know they have a different way uh, of being and me too since uh, sometimes uh, it's like uh, I'm you know I'm the French <laughs> you know, but, you know, but you yeah, know, the I'm, I'm the French. I'm the French, but I was born in Turkey. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. and I've never been so much French since I've been traveling uh, away from France. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, um, well, gr that's it. It's it's fantastic to. Um, I love play, being bad, play bad guys also. You know, because my father used to say, uh, a, a, a gentle person has one eye. Wow. <laughs> You know, right. a bad guy has one eye too. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. what's the other one? You know, I mean, we are we are made of a, a lot of different things. You know, a lot of different things. Mm. Absolutely, and, and and it was such an international cast. I mean, you're from Northern Ireland. Yeah. You're from England, but you grew up in Australia, yeah. correct? Yeah. And you're and you're from France, but born in Turkey. Born in Turkey. Greek, Greek mother. Greek mother. Uh, yes, Spanish yes. background. And, and and everybody else in the cast was so diverse as well. What yeah. was it like? Moroccan. Uh, yeah. 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 But also, I think what was what you know what really helped us, I think, was the in terms of the story, but also in terms of us uh, as a collective cast, but also as individual actors, was you know if Oliver disappeared in England. Mm -hmm. Of course the horror is as much, but it's a very different approach. It's a system that you understand. It's a language that you understand. Mm -hmm. You have support all around you. The fact that they were isolated and cocooned in a language and a culture that they don't understand, a system that they don't quite get, the, the, the dissonance of all those foreign voices, particularly in the immediate aftermath of the disappearance, that helps the kind of the, 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 all the disconnections mm -hmm. and then ultimately the isolation. But what was also interesting for us individually, I think that helped that we weren't necessarily, even though we were missing our children, we weren't going back to them at night. We weren't able to connect with them. Mm -hmm. We were, we yeah. were sort of, uh, you know, uh, disjointed from that. And also we had a, you know, a, a French-speaking Belgian crew, but also a Flemish-speaking Belgian mm -hmm. crew, and it became this big collective. I mean, Cheki has sort of memorably, I think, and very accurately described it as sort of a choir. We were a choir of many different voices, but yet on the same thing together, and and that really was something that I'll remember and was incredibly mm -hmm. useful. This sort of collective responsibility that everyone felt to the story, to the little boy and to the That's trans amazing. truth. You know? Yeah. I mean, and you guys, did you shoot the whole thing in Brussels or some of it in London as well? A little bit in London. Kind of I mean, we shot some exteriors in London just to kind of, because sometimes London just, there's no, you yeah. have to shoot in London. <laughs> yeah. But uh, because of, um, you know, the, how the structure of the, production was set up for tax and stuff we shot most of it in in belgium mm -hmm. so some yeah, of the english the, houses the story were, is set in france yes. it's set yeah. in france yeah, yeah. yeah. but and there the, is some the, back and forth the, oh the, yeah the parts in belgium where we are shooting are, are france you know because mm -hmm. it's yeah. the border so it's the same yeah. thing Absolutely. we are yeah. supposed to be in the north of france but at a certain you know, point yeah. we all got on the the uh, train the eurostar the entire crew and just went across to london shot a bunch of stuff for a couple of days and then had a few beers and then went back. That's nice. A little, <laughs> little break in, yeah. in London. Yeah. And it looked gorgeous when you guys were there too. Um, speaking of that isolation that you were talking about, there's that particular scene when it's it's after Oliver has gone missing mm. and there's this, you, you say, I'm going to leave. I'm going to go search. You stay here in case he comes back yeah. to the hotel. And and that isolation, just the way this the show is shot is amazing. Yeah, yeah that we cinematography were amazing. Is, is stunning. Yeah, we yeah. had a great director and a great cinematographer. Yeah, it makes a big difference. We had a director, Tom Shankman, who stands shoulder to shoulder with any other director I've worked yeah. with, and, and actually kind of higher. I mean, he's just collaborative, understanding, intelligent, yeah. and he you never felt that he didn't trust you. I mean, if you've got a director that trusts you 
It's like having a parent if you're a child. Sometimes it's like then you're, then you've got then you've got freedom. Then you can go, all right, you trust me. Then I can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, he was sensational. And yeah, the cinematographer was great. And the scene you're talking about, where I kind of run out into the square, I think. And just like how you just realize, you just no one no one understands really what you're going through Mm. in that moment, and no one everybody is celebrating and you're yeah. just in this well it's interesting that the audience the it's interesting that the audience is with Tony but the people all around him in the, in the scene have not, haven't got a clue they don't yeah. care who's this no. you know no and, and, and yet your little boy's face is plastered all over That's right. this mm. country yeah. and the scene when you're picking out the picture oh my god oh yeah it's tough that yeah. I just it's, it's such my, my heart was just in my throat the entire time and uh, just even the first episode and I cannot wait for Great. the rest of it oh, to great. air um you know, and you were talking about your director, Tom, and he did the entire series. Which is unusual yeah, it's very for unusual. like one director, just because the workload is huge when you get to the editing, mm-hmm. it's kind of almost impossible. But he said he really wanted to do it because I think he, he connected so deeply with the yeah. scripts. He really felt like it needed one voice. But he had to kind of, I think, I think he, he wanted to do it right. I think he had to convince oh, the producers yeah. that he could do it. Yeah. Um, but I think but we would did, all say individually that he understood us, I mean, as a collective. Yeah. But you know, it was like, he understood the, not only the script so well. I mean, he was tested on a daily basis by a script editor about you know over eight episodes. They would pick. She would say what was. She would pick a scene and she would say what comes after, what comes before. So he had a kind of encyclopedic knowledge, of course, of, the, of wow. all. Eight yeah. Scripts. So if you got lost, you could always say, Tom, what, what happened just yeah. before this? And he'd say, Well, you were walking down the street and blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And he would he would yeah. know, which is just a kind of a sign of his dedication but, to and, the and, piece. And I think. I think he also was brilliant with us individually. I think he was able. Yeah. He knew our characters so well, and he, he was able like he to had speak. To us, you know, he has a very wonderful quality where you think, oh, he's kind of really kind of concentrating on me, but he has, he, he has that with everyone, you know, he's, he's got a I'm real, his favourite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. true, true. Yeah. It's true. No, it's, it's true, huh? he was everyone, he was everyone. Yeah. Lalo is a great soul, great yeah, soul. It's great, true. you kind of, those moments where you know he's happy with the take you did <laughs> is yeah. a great moment yeah I think. yeah and in preparing for these roles which kind of are so intense did you guys have a chance to talk to any parents who have had missing children well we we kind of decided we didn't want to just because mm-hmm. we felt like it was it's such an awful event and we just felt it was so invasive to kind of mm-hmm. to to say hey what was it like you know, when your child went missing so I, I read a I read a book there's a, a book that Kate McCann wrote but I ultimately felt it was so specific to her yeah. experience and a, and the scripts are so evocative and so strong. Mm-hmm. I felt like there was enough there to exactly. kind of, and you know, like we were saying, it was you know, about, being parents. Yeah. It was about help. locating the characters. Once we could locate the characters, then we could be in the moment, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and as I say, the scripts were yeah, so good. The, the, uh, I, I, I'm sorry to yeah, Of course. Yeah. But uh, I would say uh, it's it's not about the McCain, but it's oh, it's about the McCain and the hundreds, the and, hundreds thousands and hundreds. Of, yeah. It's yeah. a generic. You know, uh, generic is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. To say the so the story yeah, totally. can really relate to, uh, like uh, for instance, they say that uh, only in England there is two hundred uh, disappearance child disappearing every year. So you can imagine the rest of the world mm-hmm. and yeah. what it means for those family. So what's interesting is that this generic story, uh, we are characters that are uh, also uh, relate to all those. People, yeah, and uh, it, it, it's uh, this uh, thriller that goes on, and we we ca- the, the audience has the the chance to investigate That's them too true, through yeah. the characters, you know, yeah. and be almost interactive with the with the the, the yeah. story. And it grows. You saw the, you know, it grows, it grows, it grows, you know. But also, it's it's interesting. I mean, like, uh, we've done quite a bit of press uh, um, in the past for the show, and um, it. It's interesting, people have even just seen one episode. Uh, you know, they they already have their own ideas about who's involved, <laughs> what's happening. Yeah. I always like to say it's her. Oh. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah it always, every I interview, think it's Jackie. I think Chucky, we're going to figure out he actually is the villain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Did you see his eyes when you said, oh, and now you're playing the good guy? There was a little bit of him going, really? <laughs> But some journalist so? said to me, now in that scene at the pool, there's a guy with white hair. Oh, that's what I heard. Who works well. in the background? Is he? Is that a clue? And I'm like, yeah, he's crossing. In my head, I'm like, it's it's actually just an extra who yeah. also met into the, the, the next no, scene. No, no. Or is, is he? he an extra? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, I yeah. actually maybe no. Yeah, yeah. maybe yeah. no. <laughs> Do you think this show will start a discussion about kind of you know missing children and the, this such? I mean, this topic. It just unfortunately we hear 
that there's a new story. I think it's every kind of in the consciousness a little bit, I mm-hmm. think. Yeah. Yeah. And I think totally because agree. I think we do have a lot of paranoia about it because there's so much in the media now and we, we have so much access to kind of those stories now. So I think we think that it happens a lot more yeah. than it actually does. But I think, you know, people don't let their kids wander out on the street anymore. You have to organize a play date and go from this house to this mm-hmm. house. So When you think yeah. about it, it's incredible to imagine that uh, there is a crime, organized crime, to to take children, take children yeah. and that uh, how come uh, some uh, human being can uh, be hired to do that and without mm. uh, yeah you know this it, it, it's so uh, yeah. incredible mm-hmm. yeah. so incredible and for all different reasons you know sex uh, in Thailand uh, piece of uh, organs, uh, organs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so crazy you know it's so yeah. crazy so you can imagine what's happening and that's what I think I, mean, I think what people will maybe get from the show I mean apart from the fact that I hope they you know are, 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 are interested in the actual story and the mystery and the characters which we are we hope we are presented as kind of you know believable characters but I think it is a, a lot to do with that whether or not it's consciously discussed but I think it's it is a, 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 an it, as much as it is an adv- a, a, a kind of illustration of how bad people can be I really do think it's also an advertisement yeah. for just the the resilience of the spirit mm-hmm. you know the resilience of, of, of survival you know that how um that the, but for a lot of people who there's no reason to get up in the morning they still have to get up in the morning mm-hmm. and get on with things you know yeah. absolutely and I mean in, in your character is so big on that like you you have kind of you know moved on. And with your life a little bit. Kind of, well, mm-hmm. you'll realize yeah. as, like, as it goes on that she actually mm-hmm. hasn't, but, um, which is what I, I quite like the way that Emily in 2014 is so different from 2006. So she seems quite closed, but I think um, as it goes on, you realize actually it's kind of a front. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, this is an eight episode limited series. So once these eight episodes are done, will we not see this anymore? Is there a chance the story will continue? Do we know? You have to watch. You have to watch. You have to watch it to find <laughs> out. Because there's Please a great musical it. number in the eighth episode. Really? It's just a yeah. lovely yeah. bit. Yeah. Is yeah, I mean, Chucky the lead in that yeah, yeah. I mean, totally. it Basically, turns the real twist is not what happened to the boy. It's the fact the twist is that it turns into a comedy. Really? No, <laughs> Gosh. No. no. Um, well, you guys can see the premiere of The Missing. It's on Saturday November 15th at 9 p.m. Eastern and Pacific Time on Stars. Do not miss it. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Talking Thank you. To me Great about pleasure. It. And uh, yeah, you. If is there a place we can find you guys on social media or anywhere to follow? You can find me all over social all media. All over social media. <laughs> <laughs> don't look. Don't Google. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't Google me. <laughs> it's not true. Well, we can see you in, in the the new Hobbit movie coming out. Oh yeah, the last one. I'm in the, the third Hobbit one? movie. Yeah, yeah. Awesome, yeah. awesome. You guys have anything coming up? That, I'm just doing something on Once Upon a Time <gasps> at the moment, which I really, which I'm having fun. I just started on Monday, which is just super fun. Awesome, congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Jackie, can... Uh, well, I have a, an album who's out uh, since December. It's called The Credo. Um, I have some French movies that will come out the, also. Bring it here, you could have. I don't have it here. <laughs> What's it called? Um, Can we find it on iTunes? Uh, yes, Credo, Credo, Credo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Credo yeah. as in what? Credo? C- uh, credo, Cre- no, Credo, credo. as a. Oh, I, believe, I believe. A I believe. Oh, credo, C R E D O. Okay. C R E D O, Credo. Credo. Io Credo, Credo. Io Credo. See, I believe. And uh, yeah, French movies and also some theater I will do in France. I will, I will do. Uh, really, really uh, I will do with a, 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 a quatuor of music and a tenor, uh, uh, say some poetry on the First World War uh, in co-production with the Brighton Festival in, uh, in cool. India. Yeah. Wow, oh, you guys fantastic. need to come yeah. on, keep up with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're like multitask. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Well, you guys can find me on social media and Twitter and Instagram at KeatonM33 as well as Facebook. And thanks again, you guys. Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. November 15th, you guys mark your calendars. Thanks for watching. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. <laughs> We're going to have so, to do it again. You guys just say buzz you later with me. Ready? One, okay. two, three. Buzz, buzz you later. later. <laughs> The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.